Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and I'd love to tell you about real-time MIDI recording, now available in Dorico 2.2, the advanced music notation software from Steinberg. Before I launched Dorico, I ensured my MIDI keyboard was properly attached to my computer. I can tell that it's connected and operational by opening Preferences, which has the key command Control, comma, that's Command, comma, on Mac, and selecting the Play page. Under Recording, click MIDI Input Devices, and sure enough, there's my Yamaha MX88 keyboard listed and checked, so all's good to go. Incidentally, if there are any devices here you don't want Dorico to receive input from, you can just uncheck them. Now, you need to check you have sufficient time in your flow to record for as long as you would like to, as Dorico will not create additional bars during recording and will stop when it reaches the end of the flow. I can press Shift-B to open the bars popover and enter a number to create some empty bars in which to record. I'll make a selection from where I would like to start recording and press the record button. I can also use the key command Control R, which is Command R on Mac. By default, Dorico will give me a bars count in before we start. There are a couple of nifty tricks to influence the staves and voices that Dorico will record into. When you have a grand staff instrument, such as a piano, Dorico will record into both staves automatically. It will use the split point set in preferences to determine which notes are added to which staff. By default, this is set to MIDI note 60, which is middle C. In order to tell Dorico to record directly into a specific voice on a specific staff, start note input and switch to the voice you would like to record into. You can even record into a new voice. Dorico will record pedaling and other controller data by default, new recordings will overwrite existing music in a voice. If you would like to retain that music and merge in your new recording, enable chord mode before starting to record. The key command is Q. The click track you hear when recording can be modified to suit your needs and preferences. Let's switch to play mode and open the play menu and choose playback options. The key command is Control Shift P. That's Command Shift P on Mac. The first option is to choose whether to hear clicks on subdivisions of a bar, disabled for simple time signatures and enabled for complex time signatures by default. You can choose between two sounds an unpitched click, reminiscent of an old style digital metronome, and a beep. Dorico uses the beep by default and allows you to change the pitch and velocity. The beep itself is a dedicated tone generator called Dorico Beep. In play mode, when you expand the time track, you can view and edit the click's routing information, rerouting it to another sound of your choice if you prefer. Just be aware that changing the routing information of sounds in play mode stops all further automatic sound loading by Dorico. The final click option is to set the number of bars count in for when you record. If you start recording in the middle of a flow that has existing music, Dorico will play back that music during the count in to help orientate you in the music. You can also choose to turn on the metronome click for playback. Dorico always quantizes the MIDI information it receives from your recordings to help notate your musical intentions clearly. Have a think about the likely shortest note values you will be playing and match them in the quantization options in Preferences. You can specify a different option for tuplets, though if you know you will not be playing any, you can switch off Detect Tuplets which sometimes may produce results closer to your intentions. 
You can even quantize a selection again later using the Edit Requantize command. This is useful when you have sections of a recording that would benefit from different quantization units, or in the case of imported MIDI. It is only the notated positions that are quantized. Dorico retains the original performance, as you can see when I requantize this 16th note passage and then switch to play mode. The lighter blue blocks are the played MIDI notes, and the thin, darker lines are the quantized notated positions. By default, Dorico will follow the tempo markings in your score during recording as well as playback. On occasion, it can be easier to record passages at a slower than directed tempo. Also, it can be difficult to achieve a reliable recording for passages with changes of tempo, especially gradual changes. Dorico 2.2 introduces fixed tempo mode, which forces Dorico to ignore the tempo markings in your score and instead play back at a fixed and steady rate. By default, Dorico is set to follow tempo mode, which allows tempo markings to take effect and is displayed in the toolbar and transport window as a selected control with an arrows icon by the current tempo indicating it can fluctuate over the course of the music. Clicking the control turns off follow tempo and puts Dorico in fixed tempo mode. Now the tempo markings in your score will be ignored and Dorico will play back and record at the constant tempo indicated. You can adjust this tempo by dragging your mouse cursor up or down on the number. Sometimes you may find you have been busking along with Dorico's playback on your MIDI keyboard, played something you rather liked and wished you'd been recording. Well, now you need never lose that amazing improv again, thanks to Retrospective Record. After playback has stopped, all you have to do is select the position in the staff you would like the recording to be input and type Control, that's Command on Mac, Alt, R. There is a menu item for it in Play Mode under the Play menu. The buffer containing anything you played will be cleared each time you start playback, so please make sure you use Retrospective Record immediately, as you will not be able to recover that music as soon as play is invoked again. When recording onto unpitched percussion kit instruments, Dorico will respect whatever option you have set in Preferences on the Note Input and Editing page, either choosing to input notes using their staff position relative to a treble G or bass F clef, or by using a percussion map. When I'm inputting notes onto percussion kits using my computer keyboard, I find it easiest to use the staff position. But when I'm using my MIDI keyboard, then I like to set it to percussion map so I can play the various percussion instruments using the keys I'm used to on my MIDI keyboard. The percussion sounds that ship with Dorico are already set up with percussion maps, so there's no further setup required. Now one thing to mention before you start recording large swathes of your best ever music. I recommend starting by inputting a simple rhythm against the click to check the latency of your system, say a few bars of quarter notes. You'll want your quantization unit set to the shortest note duration. If you find the notes are notated fractionally in front of the beat, open Preferences and on the Play page try setting the MIDI input latency compensation to a value such as 50 milliseconds and try again. If you're experiencing the opposite problem and the notes are being notated after the beat, then try reducing the buffer size in Edit, Device Setup, Device Control Panel. Finally, as well as being able to record MIDI in real time, MIDI import has been greatly improved with many new features such as setting a sensible page size and staff size, better enharmonic spelling of notes, supporting the import of markers from MIDI files and creating small changes in tempo with just signposts, so the score does not become too cluttered. If you found this tutorial helpful,
please click the like and subscribe buttons below so we can let you know about more videos like this one. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.